Oh, goodness. That shows you how a little mistake can turn into a massive, massive accident. I'm going to break down some of the Nürburgring's biggest fails from the perspective of a professional driver so we can understand how these drivers got into some really unfortunate situations. Okay, big drift, big drift. <laughs> oh, I'm out the window. Oh no, oh no, that's embarrassing. Oh dear. Okay, so it all started so well. Big drift, I'm out the window, showing off a little bit. Um, and then it bit him in the backside, frankly. Um, in the mid corner, it's actually quite easy. You have the car sat there, full um, opposite lock on the accelerator, but the, the, the final bit where the car comes back straight again, is quite challenging and difficult to do smoothly. The car st sat back up and sometimes if you do that, it can snap the other way. Okay, up next, got a golf. Tourist day. Oh! <laughs> I think all that smoke is because he's flat out on the accelerator. The rears come around because he's gone in too fast. Drivers tend to lift off the accelerator or get on the brake pedal, which makes the rear of the car very lively. He then went one way, the car gripped and he went the other way. And then fair play to this driver, he gets back on the accelerator. And what that does is spins up the front wheels, loses all of their traction, and it can sometimes pull the car back into line. And that's what this driver did, oh, but still, I actually think he kept it out of the barrier, which is really good going, but he probably had a very fast beating heart after that incident. Quick part of the track, VLN. Oh! oh. That's how quickly everything can, can get out of shape. What's impressive here is just how much faster the race cars look than the road cars. Turned it in, lots of camber change there, so the, the dynamics of the car is changing quite quickly. Turned it in, it oversteered, and then you saw him correct it, and then by that time, he's kind of off the racing line, strapped straight into the barrier, end of the race. Oh, that was a big one. Oh, oh goodness. Again, another small mistake. He ran a little bit wide, dropped the rear wheel on the grass on the outside there. And what was interesting about this was that he didn't have a full spin. Sometimes if you have a full spin, you actually go down in the direction of the track, which means that you miss the barriers. You have to be extremely lucky to do that at the Nürburgring, but that, it can happen. Um, what this driver actually did was a, a bit of a half spin where because he wasn't completely really far over the limit, it actually gripped reasonably well. And that meant that he went into the barrier perpendicular, which obviously had a big force uh, on the BMW there. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's going quickly. Oh, and we can't see through the dust, but that was a big shunt. That was a big shunt. Again, little mistake there. All he did was probably just turn in a little bit early, touched the curb ever so slightly, lost the rear of the car, where he's probably losing it on the way into the corner already, added to the, the limitation of the rear. The rear slid more, gripped up a little bit, and then that just puts you a car's width off the racing line. Because this driver's driving on the limit, that means that he's heading towards the grass and then got pulled into the tire wall on the outside there. Oh, a motorbike. Mm. Oh, no. Ugh. And a car. Ugh. I don't like watching these ones. Um, I actually took my motorbike test when I was 21 years old and I haven't really been on a bike since. Um, you know, I like to push hard on the racetrack. You're always trying to find that time. And I really feel that if I did that on a bike, I wouldn't have the skill to kind of be able to push very hard. But I also wouldn't have the patience to, to kind of not go quickly. This was a, a typical high side that you see on a motorbike where the, the bike's in the corner, got on the throttle, the rear started to let go, and then eventually it gripped up, which then catapults the rider down the road, unfortunately. Snowy Nürburg, wow, even more dangerous. Oh, understeer, understeer. Oh, that was a big hit. So this driver had Lots of understeer on the way in, and then even more understeer once he hit the snow. Fairly self-explanatory there. This is where you might want a trail brake. So if you held the brakes into the apex a little bit more, pushes those front tires into the track a little bit more, shifts the balance there, and he might have made it through um, this corner, but unfortunately the driver didn't. Smoking already, oh goodness. Okay, is it a drift car? Oh no, it was smoking already. Ah, it's put some oil down. Mmm, no. It's gonna be an ex 
expensive collection of cars on the outside here. What I think happened there was the BMW had blown up. He then spun on his own fluids and then the three or four cars after him also went down. And if you haven't experienced this on track, it's very difficult to see the oil on the track itself. You wouldn't really know. You can sometimes see it glistening in the sun. And then you turn in and, and it is like a 50% drop in grip, which is why it's so easy to go off uh, in these circumstances. Okay, here we are racing again. Oh, goodness, that was a that was a violent one. Let's um, let's watch that back again. So it's coming this really quick section of the track, this, and then he's got on the brakes. Oh no, he'd lost it well before. Let's watch right up. Yeah, so he's offline. Maybe he was going past traffic. Could be that he was running wide, going past some traffic. Might have got on some marbles. I think because of the Nurburgring, you can't you can't run off an, onto any runoff area. You have to keep the steering angle in the car, otherwise you're just gonna hit the barrier anyway. So you try to save it for as long as possible. And then if you get too much angle in the car and it's sliding too much, it just pings back the other way, which is why we see so many of these incidents where we've got kind of a big slide and then it spits you off in the other direction. On board. Cool, I don't know what car this is. So I'm like, Ooh! Oh. So, oh, he's in a Porsche. Quick part of the track again. Oh, I don't like watching things like that. And that was a, uh, and this is a track day, right? Because he's not wearing any overalls. And um, let's see how he loses it. So as he comes over the crest and gets on the brakes, just loses it, right? Because obviously as you come up over the crest, there's less weight over the car. The car can become unstable. And then he's a passenger. And what's quite good is that he lets go of the steering wheel. Sometimes, and I did it a little bit late, but sometimes when you go in the barrier, it turns the actual wheels uh, quite quickly and it spins the steering wheel inside, obviously because it's connected, kind of working the other way around. And it can just smash your hand up. I've actually broken my hand before when I've had a crash because um, I tried to hang on to the steering wheel. So in Formula One and other series, you'll see the drivers just go like this a lot of the time because they know that there's nothing they can do. You know, you, we're crashing. There's nothing that I can do to save it now. So they'll let go of the steering wheel to save their hands. Oh, big drift. Oh, oh, oh it's still rolling. Man, that was a big one. So slow motion, he's lost it very early, lost the rear. And you know, this is a dramatic incident, but when the car's rolling, it's losing the energy over, over more time. Um, so although it looks very dramatic when you're rolling like that, in terms of expelling the, the energy, it isn't that bad. You'd actually prefer to have uh, a dramatic incident that lasted a long time because you're losing speed over time. However, the first part of that incident where he smashes nose on into the barrier is the, the, from a kind of safety perspective, is the most dangerous part because you're losing all that energy very, very quickly. Um, and that's where it can be dangerous. Quick section of the track here. <laughs> Oof. Did he get nerfed then? Yeah, so the fourth one in the row here is going, yeah, he's going too fast. Nerfed into the next one and then is, wow, he's coming in like significantly too fast. If you're hitting the barrier that aggressively from just getting on the brakes, then you've got on the brakes way, way too late. Maybe it was damp offline there and he was unsighted. Um, it's probably more of the case that he had these three cars in front of him. He's missed his braking point combined with probably being on a damper part of the track and that's why he's gone so significantly past the corner. Oh, 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 no, <laughs> come on. Ah, <laughs> oh, mate, so close to saving it, so close. Okay, so, oh, like, oh, goodness. So let's have a quick look at what happened. The white car came up the inside of the BM and then the BM tried to turn in, didn't see the white car. And I think that can sometimes happen with multi-class events where you've got different sizes of cars, different levels of drivers. And this BMW driver just simply didn't see the white car there and turned into him, which then threw him into the barrier. On board again, track day, no helmet. Mm. He's got his lap time. Mm -mm -mm. This scares me to death. 
Oh god, it's looking where he's going. Good man. Oh. So where does he lose? It comes over the brow. On the brakes. When he turns it in, over the brow on the yeah. So he's so just to break this down, he's turned it in. There's a bit of a brow there. The rear's gone light. He's just tagged the grass, and he's fully sideways here on the grass, thinking, oh, I might save this. And then, look, you can see him turning around. He knows where he's going, in the gravel. I think he was an experienced driver, just made a tiny mistake, which then, obviously, turns into a big crash. Oh, another golf. Oh, okay. <laughs> Captain understand. Oh, no. Oof. Oh. Man. So, this screams of inexperience multiple things are going wrong at this point. So the thing's got loads of understeer, right? The driver's just adding more and more steering lock, even though the thing's just not wanting to turn. It's on the accelerator, so it's adding to the problem. And then when the thing finally grips up, it's got too much steering angle on it, so it spits you off this way. And because the driver's inexperienced, they don't get the steering angle off it by the time it grips up. So it turns them right and then you know, still on the accelerator, bounces them into the other barrier. All right, the Nordschleife is this destination for people to go to, but really you have to be careful. And I would always advise drivers to go and actually do a, a normal track day, to go and learn something, go and get a bit of coaching and try and understand the basics of, of circuit driving. All over the crest. We've seen this commonly, right? It's the crest that catch drivers. Oh, that would have hurt. Oof. Check out this video where I break down some incredible and sometimes hilarious scenes from rallying. If you're not already subscribed to the Driver61 channel, please subscribe as we are this close to the half a million subscriber mark, which is just incredible. Cheers and I'll see you next time.